Trap House. This week on Go With The Heat, we dedicate an entire episode to the one and only Jan Hammer. It's our last episode recapping Season 1 of Miami Vice. On This Week in Vice, we'll be covering the last section between Seasons 1 and 2. In this week's episode, we'll look back to July 28th to September 27th, 1985, when Miami Vice was king. In news, on August 2nd, Delta Flight 191 from Fort Lauderdale was serviced to Los Angeles through Dallas, crashed at Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. During its descent, the plane threw a microburst thunderstorm. Unable to escape the wind shears, Delta Flight 191 crashed short of the runway, killing 136 passengers and striking one vehicle on a highway, killing the driver instantly. Delta Flight 191's 14-month investigation helped improve aviation safety, including more training and notifications for bad weather. On August 10th, Michael Jackson finally finalized the acquisition of ATV Music Publishing. Jackson purchased the label for $47.5 million, which included rights to the majority of songs of the Beatles. ATV Music would later merge with Sony Music in 1991 and eventually become the largest music label in the world. On August 31st, Richard Ramirez was captured in Los Angeles. Dubbed the Night Stalker, Ramirez killed 14 people in the greater Los Angeles and San Francisco area. And finally, on September 22nd, the benefit concert Farm Aid took place in Champlain, Illinois at the University of Illinois Memorial Stadium. Organized by Willie Nelson, John Mellencamp, and Neil Young, the concert would raise $9 million in aid for American family farms. Willie Nelson and John Mellencamp would appear before Congress and help the passage of the Agricultural Credit Act of 1987. Acts from Farm Aid include, of course, Willie Nelson and John Mellencamp, plus Alabama, Bob Dylan, Bon Jovi, Johnny Cash, Tom Petty, Roy Orbison, and more. In music, in this time period, three songs will hold the top spot for the Hot 100. First is the signature song, Shout, from the British band Tears for Fears. From the album Songs from the Big Chair, Shout is the second number one song from this quintessential album. Hot 100 is The Power of Love by Huey Lewis and the News. Written and performed for the film Back to the Future, the song would also be nominated for an Academy Award. Replacing the Power of Love is another title song from a film soundtrack. John Parr, St. Elmo's Fire, from the soundtrack for the film of the same name, would hold the top spot for two weeks, proving once again the 80s was a silly time. I'm constantly amazed at how many cheesy songs written for movies made it to the top of the charts. As I mentioned last week, this time we're only going to talk about the fantastic film Back to the Future. Released on July 3rd, the film would hold the box office for 11 weeks and is the definitive movie of the 1980s. Directed and written by Robert Zemeckis, the film would produce two sequels, an animated show, a theme park ride, and several video games. Starring Michael J. Fox, Christopher Lloyd, Crispin Glover, and Leah Thompson, Back to the Future is a classic. Written in 1981, the film would finally be picked up by Amblin Entertainment and would gross nearly $400 million. As a cultural icon, Back to the Future stretches into pop culture across all mediums, including presidential addresses to video games. This is one of my films that is untouchable. In our era of film, it seems like every movie is either a remake or a superhero franchise. Let's all band together and make sure Back to the Future is safe from reboots, remakes, and unnecessary sequels. And that's everything you need to know that was happening when Miami Vice was king. We're taking next week off and preparing for season two of Miami Vice, so there won't be an episode of This Week in Vice in the coming week. Be sure to come back for the next season in two weeks as we kick off the next season of Miami Vice. That's all for this week. Bye, pals.